so if I can start off first, <clears throat> um, it's, um, it's worth remembering metformin is one of the oldest drugs that we have, which has been used for diabetes now for over 50 years, and therefore has got an excellent safety profile in terms of patient experience and per year. Uh, it has some very interesting cellular actions. Um, it works on the proteins uh, in, the, in the cells and reduces them from being phosphorylated too much. And so this hyperphosphorylation uh, is thought to cause protein deposition within the brain and can lead to the formation of the aggregated um, alpha-synuclein, which um, is thought to be one of the pathophysiological basis of Parkinson's. So uh, we know metformin can do that and diabetes can aggravate this. Uh, in addition, metformin also works on the mitochondria and in effect can reduce uh, the stress to the cells from oxidative stress, perhaps working through the ROS and the pro-inflammatory cytokines pathways. And all in all, it can reduce inflammation, therefore. It's interesting also to note that metformin acts not only on the neurons, but can also work on the astrocytes as well as the microglia. And therefore it can reduce the inflammatory status as a whole. It can affect the glucose metabolism in the brain, which is also involved with the inflammatory pathway. And overall therefore, uh, and being to some extent antioxidant as well, has a beneficial role in, in terms of the pathophysiology of of Parkinson's and perhaps those with diabetic Parkinson's even more because these mechanisms are even more aggravated in diabetic Parkinson's. So our hypothesis is that metformin acting on this pathway and also another fact that it's also regarded as one of the drugs which works on all the pillars of aging. In other words, it potentially at least can have an anti-aging effect. And we know Parkinson is a very age-related disorder. Its prevalence rises exponentially after you're 80 years of age. Um, so all, all in all, these factors strongly point towards a multimodal action uh, through the cells, through the astrocytes, through the microglia, through neuroinflammation, oxidative stress, the aging mechanism, all of which might influence Parkinson's, particularly the progression of Parkinson's. Now, it's also worth noting that in spite of efforts over several years and over 30 different molecules that have been tried, we still don't have any drugs that can cause neuroprotection or neurorescue in Parkinson's. And we think metformin might be a potential agent. So our study really wants to focus on the use of this drug either in very early stage of Parkinson's, motor Parkinson's, or those who might be in prodromal stage of the Parkinson's, and see whether um, if we administer metformin with placebo, uh, and see whether the metformin group either progresses in a slow fashion, or indeed if we are using it in a prodromal stage, the rate of phenoconversion to motor Parkinson is also slower in the metformin arm as compared to the placebo arm. I think uh, it's really, in some ways, the effects, if they're proven in a small pilot study, will need to be taken to a large scale, um, randomized controlled studies, which should be multi-center. And again, if we see that signal, it will be the first time any drug would have set, shown such a signal in Parkinson's. And therefore, in many ways, it could be a groundbreaking um, uh, piece of work. However, of course, um, we know that in many situations where molecules had shown promise in animal models, uh, either primates or mice or rodent models, has not been translated to human uh, science or human clinical practice. And therefore, we need to be sure that what we see in this animal model data that we have, but perhaps also in people with diabetes where metformin is extensively used, uh, whether that can be translated to Parkinson's. If it does, it will change our 
prescribing, it'll change the whole concept of how we manage Parkinson's. 